So now we know enough about Lightwave to get on with things, uh, let's have a look at kinematics. First forward and then inverse. So first of all we'll go into the modeler and we'll load an object that we've made. Uh, it's a robot arm and you can see how we can animate the arm. So you can see that the arm is made up from many different layers and you can see that there are several layers for the arm. So there's the base and there's the base of the arm and then that will be articulated and then there's the first part of the arm and which is parented to the fixed base and then we've got the forearm if you like and then the head also we've got two separate parts which are going to make a piston What's very important to note is that the whole of this object has been made in the plus Z direction. Okay, It's animated in the plus Z direction. Uh, if you're going to make a car, it's going to point towards plus Z to animate it correctly. That's the direction we drive in, towards the horizon, depth. Okay, so that's... Oh, a last thing uh, about pivots. So we've actually defined a position for pivots. So the base has the pivot where you would expect at zero, zero, zero. And now for its first child, we're going to have the pivot in the middle of the wheel uh, to parent another object to, so the arm. So you can see it's centered on the uh, axis of rotation. And then the same applies to that arm and the next arm, uh, where that arm is going to balance around the pivot of the first. And same goes for the head and at the end of the arm, uh. and so rotate about that axis. So there you go, you can see them all now. And uh, we can see how it works. If we take Piston two, 1 and 2, they're both at zero, zero, 0, OK, let's send this object to layout. And we can see there's the object. We'll just move it a bit closer in the perspective window. And here in the schematic view, um, I'm going to start with reassigning my workspace because I don't really need this many windows. So let's hit D and then change to a double vertical and then resize the schematic window because we don't really need it as big as it is so then we'll move all these bits down so that we can tidy up the schematic view so there we go and last bit the head and now let's move the the two pistons over as well and one above the other okay and now we've got a bit of space for the perspective and a bit of space for the schematic now we're going to save this scene and we're going to save it robot arm in it for initial state. That way, if we need to go back to the basic object as it was made, uh, it means that you can do so. Okay. So now we're going to see the pivots where they're placed to enable the rotation around the correct places and for this one uh, we can just adjust the time and then adjust the base. See and that works well uh, with the parented objects following along with it. Uh, it's working well uh, and it's only heading not pitch so what we can do is actually limit rotations to only heading by unclicking those two channels. So now, it doesn't matter where you place the mouse, it's only going to rotate in the heading, not in pitch or bank. Next object, so there, there are keyboard shortcuts. You can either, there are shortcuts, you can either go into this list or you can choose from the schematic or you can even press up and down on the cursor keys 
and uh, you'll move from one object to the next. So there we go, we're on the, the first part of the arm and it's only going to work in the pitch bank, uh, the pitch axis. So we should turn off heading and bank. Now forearm, uh, same thing applies, it's still pitch. So we'll do the same thing again, we'll turn off heading and bank and then the head we'll do the same again I think okay so turn off heading and bank so now we've started to animate this object and you can see how it's moving with forward kinematics so starting from the base of the object we move that and then we move the child of that and then the child of that and then the child of that to get our animation. But as you can see it's a quite a slow process and uh, not very easy to to animate using this forward kinematics. But that's why we're going to have a look at inverse kinematics next.